I'm joined today by Matt Porter. Matt, how are you? I'm well, Burton. I'm well. Thanks for having me on. And thanks for agreeing to come on. Now, last week the PDC announced the 2018 calendar, and there's a few big things on that, but one of the biggest things was the new European qualifying school in January. What was the thinking behind all that? Well, what we've noticed over the last couple of years is a huge surge in interest from um, from mainland Europe in players who want to play on the tour. Um, and it's a natural evolution of Q School that it becomes uh, a global uh, affair rather than just something concentrated in the UK. Because darts is a sport, as we've said on many times before, that we want to make a, a global professional sport rather than just... Uh, one in, in, in the United Kingdom and certain corners of Western Europe. So for us, this is a, a step forward that we think will help reward um, players from mainland Europe. I mean, obviously, predominantly the Netherlands and Germany, but also other countries where there's interest um, and, and, you know, help make things easier for them to, to take a step forward onto the tour. And, you know, longer term, we'll be looking to move pro tour events um, over to Europe as well, because frankly, you know, it's not fair on the, 20 odd percent of players who have to get on an aeroplane every time they want to come and play in a players championship or a, or a UK Open qualifier. Um, you know, there, there should be events spread further around than just in the UK. Now, have you figured out the logistics yet about the allocation of tour cards between the two Q schools? Well, we have, um, th- now this happens every year, but we have rules meetings with the PDPA. Uh, where we agree how um, certain things are going to change and how certain new things are going to be implemented. Um, And it was always agreed between ourselves and the PDPA that that would be discussed at our first rules meeting. Um, They always take place in the the last quarter of the year. The first one's going to be during the World Grand Prix. And, you know, we'll be making the announcements after that. But obviously we'll be looking for uh, the number of cards allocated um, to each Q school to, to reflect the number of entrants and the number of, of overall participants, you know, likely participants in the tour. So it's going to be a fair allocation. Um, you know, we would expect the majority to remain uh, with the main Q school in the UK, but, you know, obviously it's not going to be one card or two cards for the European Q school because that's, that's pointless and unfair. So it'll be a fair allocation. Now, is there any consideration of bringing qualifying schools for tour cards elsewhere to either Australasia or North America or Asia? Yeah, but it's one step at a time. You know, we're not ready to do those, make those moves yet. And also the players in those territories aren't ready either. You know, it's all very well a guy from Asia going to a tour school, a Q school rather, but is he going to get on an aeroplane 24 times a year to come over and play in in events? It's going to cost him a huge amount of money. Um, and it's just not viable. So they're, they're longer term um, uh, plans, but it's one step at a time for us. So Western Europe first, and then uh, and then we'll see where we progress to next. Now, does having the European Q School have any effect on Challenge Tour membership? Are players now going to be required to go to Q School um, in order to play Challenge Tour? Or could they still be Challenge Tour only members? <sighs> Well, again, this is one of the items on the agenda for our rules meeting with the PDPA, and it wouldn't be fair of me to prejudge that. So we, we have an open and honest discussion with the PDPA, and they voice their opinions, and um, you know we, we come to mutual agreement. So you know that will all become clear after we've had our, our meetings. Now, you mentioned that you want to, in the future, bring some of the uh, Players' Championship weekends to Europe. One of the uh, Challenge Tour events still is to be uh, confirmed the location. Might, and I know the Development Tour has been brought to Europe before. Might the Challenge Tour be going to Europe, or is that uh, probably just looking at a venue in the UK? Yeah, that, that, not for 2018 it won't be. No, that will be a venue in the UK. That's just purely a logistical matter of trying to find a venue that we, that we approve of that's available on, on those dates. So... Um, that will be confirmed very shortly, but no, there won't be a challenge tour weekend in, in mainland Europe in 2018. Now, the other two events that are to be confirmed are the Champions League and the World Series finals. Of course, this past year, those were in Cardiff and Glasgow. Um, are those? Gonna, do you think those are going to be moved around, is that, or is that just a logistic thing for now? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's partly logistical. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. You know, the, the Champions League in Cardiff perhaps hasn't taken off as well as we'd have hoped it would have done in terms of the live crowd. Um, You know, we obviously do a very successful Premier League night there. So having a second event, um, you know, hasn't translated itself into four sellout sessions and exactly the same situation with the World Series finals uh, at the Brayhead in Glasgow, where obviously we sell a huge amount of tickets for the Premier League night at the Hydro. 
Um, but the the um, World Series finals is less uh, less well supported at the moment. Um, so we're just going to uh, take a view on on those events after this year's editions have taken place. So um, that's purely a wait and see uh, decision. There's a number of factors involved. We wouldn't rule out moving them. We wouldn't rule out keeping them where they are either. Now, one place that has been confirmed changed on the uh, major TV events is the European Championships, which is going back to Germany after a few years in Belgium. Are there any plans for the PDC to return to Belgium either for that event or a European tour event in the near future? (coughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, we've done the European Championship in Belgium. This will be the third edition, I think, in Hasselt. Uh, We haven't perhaps penetrated the market as much as we'd like to have done. Belgium's a slightly difficult market for us with steel tip darts because obviously the, the French part of Belgium doesn't really uh, connect with it as well as the Dutch part. So the main reason we don't do the event in Holland is because of the, the government uh, ban on, on gambling sponsorship. So we, we do it in the Dutch part of Belgium uh, as the next best alternative, really. Um, but there's no no point denying the fact that we sell more tickets in Germany and get a better reaction from the crowd, hence why we're moving the event there next year. But we, we don't want to turn our back on Belgium, so it's likely that we'll be looking to return there with, with at very least, the European Tour event in future years. Now, a place that is getting a European Tour event for the first time is Denmark um, in Copenhagen. Um, is there a plan is to move that around going in the forward, or is it maybe even to other Nordic countries, or is that looking too much into the future right now yeah that, that's that's prejudging really let's see how Denmark sells um you know and how, how the reaction from from the local players is for next year you know it's no doubt no secret that we've we've invested into Scandinavian and Nordic and Baltic darts in recent years you know we've got a very good partner there Michael Friedendahl and the uh the, what's now called the PDC Nordic and Baltic Association are doing an excellent job there staging tour events they have european tour qualifiers they have world cup places world championship places you know so we're doing our very best to encourage darts in that region we've got a good strong tv partner there um but denmark is the strongest of all those countries for us uh, and again with its proximity to germany and also the netherlands that was um the, the logical choice for our expansion uh, of the european tour for next year now, one thing Barry Hearn has mentioned, he said it on our show, and we had him on a few months ago, is his desire to get rid of the entry fees to the Pro Tour events. Um, do you know yet if 2018 is going to be that year yet? Again, that's something else that we'll be discussing. You know, there's various commercial implications of that. Um, it is our, our long-term aim to, to abolish entry fees to... Uh, pro tour events and you know we hope to be able to bring that in as soon as possible whether that's 2018 or 2019 is something that we'll be deciding over the coming weeks weeks and months but it 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 will be uh, sooner rather than later now looking to this year still uh the big event of course at the end of the year is the world championships Uh, there's 24 invitational spots we had you on back in march i believe and you said it was too early then to discuss how those 24 invitational spots were going to be allocated since then there's been the announcement of the south and central american qualifier among others um are there any new invites and regions that you can announce for 2018 it's more of a reallocation, really. Um, you know, we've been looking at what we do in Asia, where historically some countries have their own qualifier, um, but maybe don't necessarily warrant that. Um, and other countries are, are all grouped together. So we've been working with our local organisers to group um, spots uh, appropriately in terms of standard of players, number of entries, um, geography. Uh, various different reasons. So gradually the pieces of the jigsaw have fallen into place. Um, some qualifiers are already known and it won't be long before we have a, a full field assembled. But we always like to um, you know, keep a, a relatively open mind because we want to make sure that we cover everywhere. And if we find that a particularly strong region uh, you know or a region has become particularly strong or has developed substantially then we like to make sure they're rewarded and as, for example as you say with south and central america there's some guys there doing some really good work um you know diogo portel has come over and and he's given it a go very close to getting a tour card this year doing well on the challenge tour obviously that we have brazil in the world cup as well so we like to make sure that we're spreading the game we like to make sure we're rewarding uh, players and organizations for their strong work and also ensuring that Anybody who has a spot just because they've always had a spot doesn't assume that they're just going to be able to keep that spot forever because, you know, the game has moved on since the early days of the international invitations where it was maybe just a case of seeing where we knew anybody who could organise a qualifier, you know, but it's moved on beyond that now and it has to fairly reflect the standard of, of darts worldwide. 
Now, last year, there were four PDPA qualifying spots uh, that were allocated. Previous years, it had been t- usually about two. Um, do you know, can you give us an estimate of how many spots will be at the PDPA qualifier this year? We would expect it to be two. Um, obviously, we do have issues occasionally with visas or travel problems for players. Um, so, you know, that, that normally becomes apparent a little bit nearer the time. Um, but, yeah, we would expect that to be two uh, as things stand currently. And then finally, I know you were just down in Australia for the World Series events there. Um, what were your thoughts about that, uh, the crowds and everything there? And might there be some new cities in Australia, since obviously this was the first year for Melbourne, uh, that the PDC will bring those World Series to events next year? Yeah, you know, the events down there are always a big success. Uh, we get good crowds, good expat turnout, excellent performances from the local players, um, you know, good good solid coverage from local media partners. So they tick every box for us. Um, what we need to make sure we're doing is spreading the game appropriately. So, you know, we, we moved away from Sydney this year after a number of years, uh, went to Melbourne, we were well received. Um, you know, we've done Perth for a few years now. Maybe it's time to give Perth a rest and look for one of the other cities in Australia. But just because we leave somewhere doesn't mean we won't be going back. You know, it's, it's like the, the analogy I always use is if you go and see your favourite band four years running, you might not go in the fifth year. You know, we don't want people to get bored of a product, people to get, get stale of watching the darts. So sometimes by uh, resting a city from the rotor, um, you know, you, you wet people's appetite again for when you take it back. So what we're looking to do is make sure that we've got four or five very strong venues and strong cities and, you know, on, on rotation every couple of years we can, uh, you know, allocate them accordingly. All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt. No, you're very welcome. Thank you for, for, for having me on.